So how do you solve unit rate problems? Uh, unit rates are essentially a set of problems where they're asking you to find out how much of one quantity will you get when you have one of the other or a unit of the other or uno of the other which is one so again it's how much of one quantity will you have when you have one of another quantity let's look at this problem Delilah does 184 jumping jacks in four minutes she does her jumping jacks at a constant rate and a rate is pretty much like a ratio so the ratio of jumping jacks to minutes is 184 to 4. It will remain that if you simplify it or continue to extrapolate, it doesn't matter. How many jumping jacks does or can Delilah do per minute? So they're asking you, how many jumping jacks can Delilah do per minute? And minute is singular. So that, again, would show us that we're talking about one minute. So, to figure this out, all we have to do is take the ratio of jumping jacks to minutes, which is 184 jumping jacks. Let's call them jacks. Over 4 minutes. So we write our ratio. And then, since we're looking for 1 minute, well, we know if we write an equivalent fraction, since minutes is in the denominator of our initial ratio, then in our equivalent ratio, one minute should be at the bottom. Line up minutes and minutes. So now all we have to do is solve the equivalent ratio for what we've called this unknown, or for the box. And in order to do that, we know that we need to go from 184 to the unknown. So we need to go from 4 to 1. And that tells us that since to go from 4 to 1, we have to divide by 4, then we need to do the same thing with the 184. You can also just tell this by doing 184 divided by 4. That will always work, but just to stay consistent, we'll look at it this way. So this tells us that 184 divided by 4 will give us our answer. So really, what they're telling you to do is to do long division and then divide 184 by 4. So 4 goes into 184. 4 goes into 18 4 times because 4 times 4 is 16. The difference is 2. Bring down your 4. 4 goes into 24 6 times and my answer is 46. So 46 jumping jacks in one minute, 46 jumping jacks per minute, because in reality, this is a rate of 46 jumping jacks per minute. Celia bought a bag of 12 goldfish for $3. What is the cost of one goldfish? So again, I'm going to write my initial ratio. 12 goldfish cost $3. So what is the cost of one goldfish? So this time, since one goldfish, goldfish is represent, represented in the numerator, so I'm going to squeeze this in here, over the unknown, the cost is what I don't know, Again, by simply lining up my units, I can easily identify what I'm looking for. So I need to go from, I'm looking for the answer in dollars, so I need to go from $3 to my unknown. And this unit will also be in dollars. So 12 goldfish to one goldfish is telling me that I need to divide by 12. So I need to divide both of these by 12. And so here, I now know that I need to do 3 
divide it by 12 to find out how much one goldfish costs. And this is why I like this method because it probably would have been a little confusing to figure this out if you didn't know that you had set it up properly. So this would be three is being divided by 12, not 12 divided by three, three is being divided by 12. So I'm gonna set it up. So show three divided by 12. And so since 12 cannot go directly into three, I need to add a decimal, bring my decimal up and add a zero to make it 30. 12 goes into 30 two times because two times 12 is 24. The difference is six. I need to add another zero and bring it down to make this a 60. 12 goes into 60 five times because five times 12 is exactly 60. I know that I'm done. And so the answer is actually 25 cents for one goldfish. So 0 0.25 or 25 cents for one goldfish. This time, there's a table that shows the speed at which Jeff does four activities. Uh, for example, biking has a rate of 19 miles in two hours. So we have biking. We have biking, which is 19 miles in two hours. You can see that here. Walking, 14 miles in four hours. Running, 15 miles in three hours. Swimming, 18 miles in four hours. Which type of activity does Jeff do at a speed of 4.5 miles per hour? So what we're supposed to do here then is we just need to find out which of these activities, when I find the unit rate, gives me 4.5 miles per hour. Well, we can eliminate a few of them pretty quickly. Well, let's say one of them for sure, because we can see here that 15 it's miles per hour. And you, you write the ratio in the order that they give you in the unit rate in this case. So miles will come first and should be divided by hours. Well here, 15 miles per hour, 15 divided by three will give me five. And that's not 4.5, so it's not running. Okay, well, um, we can also say that 14 divided by 4, but if I know that 4 times 4 would give me 16, if it was 4.5 miles per hour, it'd have to be, um, I'd have to do more miles or more than, than 14 miles in 4, if I'm doing 4.5 miles per hour. So 14 divided by 4 is going to be a number that is less than 4, but again, that's just long division. 19 divided by 2, I know that that gives me 8. So that means that it can't be biking. 19 divided by 2 will be 8 miles per hour. So I'm really only left because I know my division in my head with uh, 14 divided by 4, which we've already eliminated that one. So let's test 18 divided by 4. So 4 goes into 18. Well, four times, four times four is 16. So four times, that's 16. The difference is two. I need a decimal so I can add a zero and bring it down. That means I need to put my decimal up top. And this becomes a 20. Four goes into 20 five times, exactly five times, so 4.5. And my answer would be swimming because 18 divided by four gives you 4.5 miles per hour, which really means miles divided by hours. And that is swimming. So here's another one just like that. The following table shows the speed that four animals travel today. 
uh, for example, the turtle travels six meters in five minutes. So which animal traveled at a rate of 1.5 meters per minute? So I need to know which one traveled 1.5 meters per minute. So again, meters, meters per minute means that you're going to take the meters, meters per minute, which will mean meters and divided by the number of minutes. Okay. Well, if I say, if I look around, I know seven divided by seven gives me one. So it's not caterpillar. Um, four divided by eight would give me 0 0.5. So it's not a snail. Um, six divided by five, I know that's one and some change. 12 divided by eight is one and some change. So I really only have to test two of these. So my question is, if I do six divided by five, will I get 1.5 for the turtle? Well, let's see. Six goes into five. One time with a difference of one to add a decimal. So I can add a zero and bring it down. That makes it a ten. Five goes into ten two times. And so that leaves me with 1.2 as my answer. So six divided by five is 1.2. So we know that it's not a turtle because we're looking for 1.5. So let's just finish off by confirming. If I divide 8 into 12, 8 goes into 12 one time. The difference is 4. Add a decimal, add a decimal, add a 0, and bring it down. That becomes 40. 8 goes into 40 five times. And again, that's exactly 40 with a difference of 0, so it's exactly 1.5. So 12 meters divided by 8 minutes gives me 1.5 meters per minute. And that's what I'm looking for. So the ant is the correct answer. All right, so you can see the, the trend and the flow of it. And so... We'll just do this last one. The following table shows how many multiplication problems four students were, were able to solve in different amounts of time. For example, Murray solved 58 problems in two minutes. Which student solved problems at a rate of 28 per minute? So a rate of 28 per minute. So 28 what? 28 problems per minute. Okay, so again, we're going to take that same logic and look for numbers that we know when we divide it out gives us numbers other than 28 because problems per minute means problems divided by minutes. Well, 58 divided by 2 is actually 29, so it's not Murray. And let's see... Those are the, that's the one that's most obvious. So the rest of them we probably will have to divide out if we aren't sure exactly how the math works out in our head. So let's quickly say 3 goes into 78. How many times for Chris? Well, that's 2 times. 2 times 3 is 6. A difference of 1. Bring down the 8. 3 goes into 8 6 times. 3 goes into 18 6 times. And so this is 26. So 78 divided by 3 is 26. But I'm looking for 28. So it's not Chris. Uh, for Logan, let's see 3 goes into 84. 84 divided by 3 means 3 goes into 84. Uh, this is 2 times. This will be 2 times again. 2 times 3 is 6. A difference of 2. Bring down the 4. 3 goes into 8. I mean, 3 goes into 24 eight times, and exactly a difference, and exactly 24, which means that I get exactly 28, which is what I'm looking for. So Logan, 84 divided by 3, gives me exactly 28. But we always want to be careful because sometimes there could be more than one correct answer. So let's make sure that Taylor is incorrect. So 4 goes into 92, 
4 goes to 9. 2 times, 2 times 4 is 8. A difference of 1, bring down the 2. It becomes a 12. 4 goes into 12 3 times, and 3 times 4 is 12, so I'm done. And that's 23, so it's not Taylor. So just wanted to confirm, you should always do that to check all the answers because sometimes they add, they give you multiple correct answers. So the final answer was Logan. So that's it. Um, the When they ask you to figure out what the unit rate is, uh, the best way to be sure that you set it up properly is to uh, write the ratio and then the thing that is supposed to be a one, put that in line with the correct unit and then solve it. Um, and if they give you a table and ask you for the correct unit rate, then really the quickest way to find a unit rate is actually just to divide uh, the first unit in the ratio by the second unit. Um, so hopefully uh, this will help out. Make sure you do these problems on paper and then try it for yourself. Uh, work well.